And then the giraffes, almost certainly, if they're living in the same proximity, they're eating the same thing, they're going to have a lot of the same bacteria. Regents Professor Howard Ackman says the zoo is a good place to consider how life evolves, not life as in these big guys, but life as in their cohabiting microbial cousins. Howard is an evolutionary biologist tracking the dynamics of change in bacterial genomes. How big is the product supposed to be? So if I compare two different bacteria, they may differ in their gene content, even within the, what we call the same species of bacteria, by a thousand genes. Sometimes we can figure out where they come from, sometimes we can't. Four, five, six. Bacterial genes have evolved through time, much as their larger cousins. But differing bacteria are also able to share genetic material, obtaining DNA directly from other bacteria. They can get these new traits that were invented somewhere else. It could be another bacterium or something of this sort. And you can evolve and get that trait immediately. We well, can see the problem with this is that you have to have a functional gene in order to make a new functional gene. So that sort of begs the question, where do the brand new ones come from? How does something completely new get invented? And this is just a gradient on one sample with her primary? Yeah. Understanding oh, how they that innovate is key it. to controlling bacterial microbes. For thinking about human health, certainly, this is, this is important. It tells us where these bacteria are coming from and, and how they've uh, acquired the characteristics that they have. <laughs> oh, sorry, we're not supposed to laugh at this. Howard's first interest was in animal behavioral sciences. This is great. The only person who was doing science that I liked worked on animal behavior. Then I went to a graduate school, and the animal behaviorist there was on sabbatical. He moved to the emerging field of molecular evolution and the Berkeley lab of the late Alan Wilson, one of the field's most influential scientists. Howard was, was involved in that really uh, early on. He published an inf influential paper where he was able to calibrate a molecular clock for bacterial species, which really opened up a, a large field of bacterial molecular evolution. We gave her this because it was a Howard has also advanced the study of virulence factors in bacteria. He's a prolific researcher, always willing to explore new territory. So what, what insect did you get this from? We got this from the... Um, uh, spittle bugs. He's very fearless. He's willing to challenge, you know, people to think about whatever project they're on, you know, a little bit further, a little bit out of the box. So what did the Solero group do? Well, what would you do if someone wrote this article about your, your, your paper? The really impressive thing that, that he's done is teach this course called Research in Genomics. It's to bring together all of the students in the program and to have them identify and work on a, an actual research problem over the course of a semester and from that to uh, actually produce a publishable paper. Howard's time is split between the Ecology and Evolutionary Biology Department and the Biochemistry Department. So I get the best of both worlds. The first thing that attracted me to the U of A was my wife. She already had a position here. So I, so I have what we call a dependent variable. Howard's wife is Nancy Moran, also a UA Regents professor and an evolutionary biologist. time to do any more because the She's the best collaborator I can not really just any idea I can ask her. I'll get you the DNAs on this for Bacillus E. coli. Seeing how he, he does science is really inspiring. That all together. You know, when you're at like hour 10 of the day and you see him just zipping by and like having to go work on a grant or advise some students or teach a class, it's like, okay, there's a little bit more in me. I'm gonna stay and work a little longer. Our virus is alive. How many want yes? Viruses are alive. You believed it? How come you don't believe it? <laughs> he publishes like mad. He, uh, he, you know, he's very dedicated to teaching. He's one of those people that encourages everyone around him to be better. Ribosome? You know what those are? One day, Howard uh, came to work and he was wearing a shirt, and I, I thought it was a nice looking shirt, and so I just commented. I said, Howard, that's a, that's a nice shirt. And he said, you want it? It's yours. And I said, no, 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 come on, don't, don't be ri ridiculous. <laughs> and the next day, he, he brought it in, washed and folded it, and he gave me the shirt off his back. So, OK, fine. So have you ever taken your car in for repair? So Howard and I actually run together. We will probably spend about a tenth of that run, maybe a quarter of the run talking about science. Yeah, that's the fun part. And the possibility that we may one day hold all the answers? Oh, no, let's hope not. I mean, most. I mean, if there were a big book to give me the answers to my question, we'd probably go and look in it. We wouldn't keep keep working, even though it is fun. But there's there's no end of questions.